crossing each other and getting confused with each other and 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 that turned into that I, I got overcome with the idea that what I'm trying to explain is a feeling. It's not it can't be explained in in English class and it can't be explained through the use of traditional grammar. It's a feeling and don't try to understand it. You just gotta feel it. So whenever I, I wanted to look into the Bible and see what the Bible had to say about the feeling versus the, the idea of feeling versus understanding. And uh, came across in Jeremiah 17, uh, chapter 17, verse seven. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17, verse seven, it says, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. Amen. 17, verse 7 says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. So, this idea of feeling, not trying to understand it, just feeling that led me to this verse. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. The man who trusts in the Lord. I have trust in the Lord. I, the man, am choosing to trust in the Lord. So if you take that alone, you think I have the control. I am making the decision to trust in the Lord. I have trust and I want to place that in the Lord. But the end of the verse says, it's not only blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord also comma whose trust is the Lord this is the same man your trust cannot be placed in the Lord your trust has to be the Lord the end of verse 7 says whose trust or whose hope the Lord is so that means the Lord has to be your hope, has to be your trust. And you think, how can the Lord, how can the Lord be my hope? How can he be my trust? And this goes back to, you have to feel it because the Lord can be your hope. The Lord can be your trust. He can be your strength. He can be your light. He can be your patience. If you trust in the Lord, you have to allow him to be your trust. And this idea of wanting to wanting to understand and having to let go of the understanding and you just have to feel it. It, uh, it, 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 it just came, kept ringing in my head and, and I knew I heard this before and um, it reminded me of a movie that I watched. And the movie was uh, directed by a very famous movie director he's won tons of awards and he, he created a movie an academy award winning movie a sci-fi thriller that talks about come you know time travel and the idea was a spy who time traveled and he was met with the top doctors and the most top secret laboratory and the characters and the, lab, the, the scientist is explaining to the main character how these objects and, and these, you know, people, when they're time travel, they move in reverse. And, and the main character is trying to understand it. And he's, he's, he's asking questions and he's asking our favorite questions. How? Why? And the doctor runs out of, of, of reason. She can't explain it. She just tells him, I don't know. She tells him, I don't know, it just is. She tells him, don't try to understand it, just feel it. And I thought, this director, an expert in his field, who made up his own universe and can create any idea and any possibility, he didn't have an answer. He couldn't come up with some idea. He he was trying to explain something that you cannot put into words. 
and he's trying to get the viewer to just stop trying to understand it and just feel it. So that the the scientists, the doctors, they didn't have an answer, and we see that in in our everyday life. We see that in our world as well. How many times have we seen doctors and scientists say they don't know how, they don't know why, and they even made their own term the medical mystery, which literally means that there's no set explanation, there's no set precedent, this is a first of many, or one of many, that they don't have a reason for, and they don't have an explanation. But we know why. It's our Lord. The Lord is our trust. Amen. The Lord is our hope. Amen. Amen. And we don't need an explanation because we know our Lord has a greater level of understanding and is far greater than ours. And it lets Him take over. Not so that we can put our trust in Him, but so that we can let Him be our trust. And we have to let Him be our trust. Be our trust. Proverbs verse 3, Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 says, Trust says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Amen. Be our trust. Let him be our trust. Proverbs 3, 5 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. It reminded me of, of watching um, Little Faith and Elise play um, play outside, play on the playground. Um, they love to run, jump, climb. And, and as a parent watching them, you can't help but but say and tell them, get down, stop that. <laughs> and, and, and I've said it so many times before, and, and they always say their favorite their favorite response, which is our favorite, our favorite response is, why? <laughs> they want to know why. And we say our favorite response, which is, because I said so. <laughs> <laughs> we say, because I said so. And it's an easy way to say it. But the idea behind because I said so. The idea behind it is really because we don't really want to spend the time to explain everything in our head, everything that we know. Because our level of understanding over our children, two, three, four, five years old, our education, our experience, tells us we know exactly what's going to happen. We are not we don't want to sit there and try to explain the formula or the mathematic equation of gravity and their their weight with the earth or their speed or that their balance and equilibrium is comes from your inner ear. Maybe that's not fully developed yet. Maybe they might have a fall and scrape their knee or get hurt. No, we say you're going to get hurt. Make it simple. But then, of course, the kids, they do what they always do, and they don't stop. And, of course, they get hurt. And when we're putting on Band-Aids and bandages, and they're sitting there wondering, how did you know? How did you know? And we've seen it a thousand times before. We know what's best for them, and we tell them, I've seen it before. It's happened to me. I've seen it happen before. It's going to happen again. But I know what's best for you. And we tell them, sometimes you don't have to understand why we're telling you to do this or stop or get down. 
Sometimes you don't have to understand. Sometimes you don't have to lean on your own understanding. Sometimes you just have to trust me. Amen. That trust. The trust. That's the trust that, that we need to have in the Lord. Jesus. With all of our heart. Because yes. he has seen us. He knows our heart. And he knows when our spiritual equilibrium, which is not in our ear, but in our heart. He knows when that's not fully developed. And he knows when we're one slip away from from falling and from, from getting going down the wrong path. And he knows. And he'll call us back. He'll speak to us. You don't, we don't need to try to understand it. We just have to feel it. He tries to understand it. He tries to, to, to put a, uh, make a reason and expl explanation for it. And the miracles that he makes daily will pass right before our eyes. And we won't see it. We don't need to understand it. We just need to feel it. That same idea of having trust, the same idea of trusting in the Lord with all your heart, okay. it is going to leave unanswered questions in the moment because we don't always see the bigger picture. But if we trust in the Lord, He will reveal it to you in time. That's it. That's it. Our pastor was called to visit the Temple Cliff, the Cliff Temple Baptist Church. And in my mind, I thought about how little Faith has been playing baseball for over a year in Oak Cliff. I thought about how he had been playing every Saturday, sometimes during the week. As a family, everyone would travel to Oak Cliff to go visit and to go see him play baseball. Was that the Lord preparing us for a visit to Oak Cliff? Was that him getting us familiar with the area, with the location, with the idea of traveling to another part of town, way on the other side of the city? Because the enemy will get in your head and tell you, oh, that's too far. Oh, I don't know my way around. Oh, I'm not familiar with that place. Oh, I don't like the area. The enemy will tell you that will give a thousand excuses and a thousand reasons to make you think negatively, think bad about it, think yeah. all kinds of thoughts and ideas. I should be serving my area here. I don't. He'll put any idea into your head to get you to block your own blessings. Yeah, good enough. Okay. But over a year, he's been preparing us. He's been uh, planting the seed and getting us ready just for a visit. So we don't need to understand why we were called to visit that church. We just have to trust it. Because when the time came, we had been ready and we were willing to do the Lord's will, which is visit the Baptist church. Were these miracles in our face every week, week after week? Maybe. But we don't need to understand it. We just need to give it time and let God reveal it to us. Here. Because he will talk to us. I woke up about two weeks ago. I woke up and um, I had a a overwhelming calm. And I had the idea, the feeling that God spoke to me. Three words. Man of God. I had the feeling of my dad, our pastor, and I had the image of my dad, our pastor. And I woke up and I thought, I said three words in my head, man of God, man of God. 
And the second thing out after that was I thought, I think God just spoke to me. I, 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 I wasn't dreaming. I woke up with the idea. And I thought, that's that's the word of God. It doesn't come in 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 any way that we expect it, and I don't think it, it can be the same for anyone, any two people. I think everyone is going to experience it at one point or another um, on their own and in their own way, but that's how it came to me, and that was two weeks ago. And ever since, I've been thinking, man of God, I know he's a man of God. That's my dad. I know he's... I don't. Why are you telling? Why are you telling me this? Why? Why do I need to know that he is a man of God? Is he trying to tell me he is a man? And and I've been thinking about it and asking these questions. And it isn't until today that I thought I don't need to understand. I just need to trust in the Lord with all my heart. I don't need to lean on my own understanding because I know God will reveal it. And God has a message and a plan for us all. I see it. Um, I hope. Um, I hope the idea of trusting in the Lord, letting the Lord be our trust, letting Him be our hope, um, and not leaning on our own understanding, um, can apply in every aspect of our life, not just in church on Sundays, but going through our own personal lives and our own decisions. Personally, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. I don't know if I'm making the right decision. I don't know. But if I open my heart and open my mind to, to the Lord um, and ask for that trust and ask for that guidance, ask for that hope and allow him to be that trust and hope I know he'll reveal it all and following his will 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 um, ultimately that that's what he wants and, and if we're following his will then that's what you know that's the best that we can do so I see it. Um, okay. I'll uh, make a quick prayer and it's a close um, Dear God, thank you for allowing us to be here today. Thank you for for allowing me to to read and to explore these ideas with you. I um, it is a very personal journey, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I believe that you do work in mysterious ways, and I surrender the idea that we have to understand or be in control or know why in the moment I know trusting I know praying I know allowing you to guide our lives I know that's the ultimate goal. I know that's the ultimate goal for each and every one of us, for our children. I know you're working in miracles every day. I know you're setting setting your pieces two, three months, two, three years in advance. I know there's medical mysteries. I know there's Miracles being done in hospitals every day. And I pray today that you allow us to let go of our need for control and our need of understanding and allow you to take over and to take the wheel. I want to thank you for allowing me to find the right words for today okay. and I pray that you continue to watch over us and speak to every one of us in the way that we can 
hear you in the way that we will accept it because you know what's best for us and you know when we will listen and when we won't. I pray that you allow us to receive it when you do speak to us and that we're able to let go of that, uh, that need to understand. Thank you again for everything you've given us and will continue to give us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Gracias a Dios, ¿verdad? Porque cada enseñanza es nueva. Gracias a Fabián, ¿verdad? Porque estuvo Amén. dispuesto a traernos un estudio. Y cada, a cada estudio que, que Dios nos da es un aprendizaje nuevo, diferente, en la manera en que Dios nos habla a través de cada pensamiento de cada uno de nosotros. Y cada quien tiene una manera de cómo Dios nos habla, cómo nos habla a través de, de este estudio de parte de Fabián, cómo Dios pone palabras en él, y esto que estaba escuchando, uh, de, cómo, de cómo Dios nos habla de diferentes maneras, el verso 5 que, que, que trajo en Proverbios capítulo 3, verso 5, donde dice, Confía en el Señor de todo tu corazón, confías en Él, deja que Él sea el que nos guíe, el que nos lleve, el que haga las cosas por nosotros y confiando en Él, nosotros podemos estar seguros que haremos lo correcto. No estar buscando las, las contestaciones que en veces no tenemos contestaciones ni los, ni los más inteligentes pueden entender muchas cosas que Dios ha hecho en esta, en esta, en esta tierra.